All right, so I wanted to do a quick video on, I just ended up uh, flushing that fuel tank because I wanted to put it in service. <clears throat> so, didn't get much out of it. A few little fine flakes, um, just pieces of uh, aluminum shaving. So, you know, it's probably something left in the corners I didn't get when I cleaned it, before, you know, but I figured it would be something in there from welding, but it really came out pretty clean. So, anyway, um, ran my uh, air breather tube from that tank over here and teed it in. Um, and yesterday I went to put fuel in it at the gas station and um, when I pulled this off, it got a poof of pressure, which I believe is you know what it's supposed to do. And I didn't realize it, but bef before I had um, these bigger zip ties on this fitting right here, and these, these are factory, so, you know, they just use zip ties to to clean it up. But they're pretty tight, you know. And anyway, the bigger zip ties I had um, weren't getting a full clamp on the inside of the zip tie. Um, and it was actually bleeding off there. And I'd, I'd heard it hiss before, and I, I knew it was there. But um, it's been a couple days ago that I did this. But... Um, Anyway, I put these smaller zip ties on and it basically held pressure. So, which is what it's supposed to do. The check valve is a one way direction that way. It's the system designed to, um, you know, where it'll actually build pressure when it's not in use. But when the pump is running, it brings air in. Or when the tanks cool down. So basically you're out in a warm day cools off at night pretty much every day you get temperature fluctuations from night to day and you're gonna have expansion and contraction so it's happening all the time and this is there to, to let it breathe so it's not there to let it come out but it's there to let it come in so essentially at night you know it cools down um, and it lets air in and the day when it heats up the uh, pressure builds in the tank and that pressure should be there um, until you turn the pump on and it draws it down you know being that that's a check valve so because this is bringing outside air into the tank um, <clears throat> I believe this is a moisture trap which is great you know because you know the air has got to come from outside which is this is the original setup. This was this came through. This was like mounted to the upper hull of the jet ski, and that this little piece here was just like siliconed in it. Um, so this tube here has a hole right there in the side, uh, not at the top. So this is where it draws air in, and which is kind of strange. I don't know. I there's no hole there the way they had the setup on the jet ski was you know it was to bring air in at the top of the front of the jet ski and to bring it in here now there's a a hole right there so essentially with that sealed in there I'm not sure why that tip was stuck up through the the jet ski hole on the top there because um, it doesn't really do anything it's you know but I believe that's actually where it was sealed so it had sealant on there and um, but either way this is where air comes in on the jet ski and draws it in through here which is sitting in there oh, well, anyway that goes on there and then through the tubing through this moisture trap and into the tank so you know it's really designed to keep water from coming into it um, and to trap moisture this was hanging like in the center of the jet ski underneath the steering it was on a bracket if I recall and basically had to drill out the rivets so I think what I'm gonna do you know I thought about bringing this up through the hole of the boat but and just doing it outside but it's never really a danger unless your check valve fails because it, it's not gas fumes coming out. 
as long as your system's tight and it's and your check valve works you know having this inside the engine compartment you know with the lid on it's not an issue to get the lid on but you know if you're concerned about this failing gas fumes coming back up through all of this you know underneath this boat you know and having a spark issue and explosion obviously check valve fails that's that's a possibility so I guess the best thing to do is <laughs> to bring that up but they didn't even have that set up in the in the jet ski so this was all on the on the bottom side if I recall um, I don't know maybe this maybe this was now it was on the bottom so yeah I don't I don't get that but you think you'd want to bring that out just for safety's sake so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to bring this out out of the hole before I put the lid on. Um, one thing I was thinking was, I'm thinking about putting handles right here um, for the swim deck or step or whatever you want to call it. So I was thinking, well, if I put a handle from say here to here, that's after I get all the trim done and whatnot, but from here to here, then I could probably just drill a hole before I put the handle on and poke that up in there um, and seal it on the back side and then what that would do is I just have to have a hole in the bottom of the handle so it could breathe so essentially it would draw air in all the way up you know unless you sunk the boat you never get water up there and and that tube coming up would just serve as another moisture trap so I'm thinking that's probably what I'll do but for now I just needed to vent both tanks and so they could equalize. Because if I open up this fuel line to let this the fuel that's in here equalize with that tank, which I'm going to do here in a little bit, um, you know, it's got to bring air into this tank, and it has to take air out of that tank just so they can e equalize. So, I mean, you can have them either both open to do that, or just hook them together, and you know, the air's the air is going to transfer as the fuel is transferring on the bottom. So essentially that's how they work um, with the dual tanks. Um, you know, you need that, that system fully set up. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add a little more gas to this tank. I'm pretty sure it's pretty full, but the gauge on the, on the dash, you know, like yesterday, I, I don't know how sensitive it is. I'll look at it today and see where it's at. But um, you know, I put a few gallons in at the store before I went out. I knew there was already a few gallons in there. I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably pretty full. Um, and it showed completely full. But in short order, it dropped a couple notches on the on the gas, the fuel gauge. So I'm like, you know, I don't know if if it's possible the the float in here might be hanging up or. It's just at a different height than the jet skis, you know, sensing it. Um, tough to say. It's possible you could I could pull this out and bend the 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 wire that it's the floats hanging on because um, it's kind of a right angle down there where it goes out. Um, I don't really care that much as long as I know what I'm reading on the gauge. I know how much fuel I've got, you know, in the tanks, and it, it might just be that. Once I get them equalized, you know, I'll like pull that vent plug out and, you know, look at the gauge, just stick something down in there and, um, okay, well, this is the level. So we know on, on the dash, this is where it at, where it's at. And I guess the most important thing would be when the gauge is alarming and reading low fuel, how much gas do I actually have? And then there might be a cause to actually adjust this. Um, to read differently um, just to keep it from alarming on a normal day <clears throat> if that's what occurred you know who knows but anyway eventually I'm going to tie that up in the back here but I've got some ideas about mounting like a GoPro mount that goes up high um, and I thought well if I bolt through on the on the back side of that you know maybe I would just use a, a rubber clamp and, and just tie that up Otherwise, it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, probably just leave it there for now. It's that's heavy duty fuel line, three sixteenths. Um, I just went to get some vacuum hose, but they had some 
some nice uh, you know high pressure fuel line at three sixteenths. So um, always like going with better material if I can. So I also put a um, a rubber pad gasket pad um, between the water uh, box and that that the edge of that box right there because um, it was hitting. I kind of have halfway wonder if that was some of my vibration but um, I didn't want to leave it that way very long so I took some thick um, rubber pad and I used uh, the marine sealant and I basically glued it to the side of that water box so um, you know eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna have to you know build something underneath to hold it firmly and you know put a strap on it to where it's just firmly held there you know but it um it wants to it wants it's pretty tight and there's not much left and right movement maybe you know a half inch at most um so it wants to be against that that inside edge of that box over there but um it's fine for now it's it's not it you know it's hard to even move it so you know it's obviously full of water or it's got as much water as they do have in it so just with the weight and the block i have underneath it's a wood block and that pad you know it really doesn't go anywhere but ultimately you know you wouldn't want it <clears throat> pulling on your exhaust i'm sure the exhaust can handle it but not a good thing so you know we'll get to that I just haven't haven't done it so the sun just came out it's like getting close to noon and um the fog was hanging in for a long time it's cold this morning but sun's out so we're definitely wanting to go out for a run today. I just I wanted to get this accomplished, and then when I open this up and equalize them, I'm obviously going to watch the gauge and see what it does. Um, I know. I suppose I could do that now. Let's see. Something else I was want to do is to move the seat because it's rubbing on this side. <laughs> you know, when I was welding those in, I don't know. It seemed like I was even, but something shifted or bent or something i don't know i'm gonna have to look into that but uh, it's like it's not locked okay so the fuel gauge it's showing up at the top like three quarter i, I think there's two notches above where it's at which is like right there so yeah okay i'd, I'd say there's probably two notches above that so that'd be two, four, six, eight. So there's eight notches. So right now it's saying we're at like three quarters of the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and release that. Open up those valves. See what it comes down to. Okay. So I need to bend that handle a little bit. But it's open. Alright. Go open up the other one. Should push here through the other side through that hose that hose hasn't had fuel in it yet and then open up that dude right there we should be actually equalizing right now so it's a pretty small hole it's 3 16 od on those barbs so it's you know might be eighth on the inside um so i give it a minute i don't know if we can actually Watch it go down. Okay. But it should. Nothing yet. It's only going to move as fast as the air lets it breathe. So a tiny little hole. Um, and I'll shut it off and see where I'll come back on when I get leveled out. All right, so it's been long enough. Um, so the tank's equalizing, brought it from three quarters down to half on the gauge. So that's between two tanks. That's where it's sitting. So anyway, that was the effect of the gauge. You know, you'd think it might might be a little lower than half, but who knows how it reads like that. It, it, it may be reading fairly accurately for all I know. Um, and if that's half, I don't know, there's supposed to be, I think, 12-gallon tanks, so if it was a reality half, it'd be, 
uh, half of 24 so 12 um, and you know I tend to think there's at least 10 gallons in there so it's probably pretty close you know we put five in yesterday I can't I just can't remember exactly I know I put like three gallons in it initially you know we've been out a couple times didn't do a ton of running but we ran it you know and so it'll be interesting as time goes by to see see what the fuel does at, at some point you know I'd like to just go ahead and fill that sucker up where I can you know see it coming <laughs> coming up that tube you know and um, you know right before a run you not leaving it in there and just know that is completely stinking full of course that's a lot of weight you know and there might be times where you know hey I'm I'm never gonna go through a half tank um, you know in a day and that's all we're doing I'm just not gonna put the weight in you know so no big deal it's nice having the capacity the tanks themselves aren't very heavy so you know it is what it is so anyway I'm getting ready to move these seat brackets forward an inch to make a little more space here as I've got this mark it's just barely rubbing on that and it's just flapping on it it's not even pressure but seats rubbing over there on the side as well you can see that rub mark right there and it's turned the seat gray right there so I need to correct that which may be an angle thing I don't I don't know they measured this out pretty good but with the hole twisted you know you can kind of you're gonna get something different on the bottom than you do on the top so I, I think I had it pretty good but in reality after I installed those I just ended up on the top I was over further that way it, it probably makes sense with the twisted hole on the bottom so um, anyway I'm just gonna move these forward an inch to make a little clearance there eventually a bulkheads going in so um, we'll need a little, little bit of clearance for that and also want to keep the seat from rubbing seats working pretty good um, you know eventually I'll have a pan in there but I don't want to get too off on that subject later <laughs> 